Time once again to check on the latest earnings trends with Zach's Director of Equity Research, Dirk Van Dyke. So, Dirk, probably to say that uh, this realignment on Wall Street completely changes the third quarter earnings picture, and the fourth quarter, for that matter, is an understatement. Yeah, kind of like Noah saying it looks like rain. Right, because now we've got analysts uh, who are beginning to more dramatically cut their forecasts. Uh, but that brings about the question, were they just overly optimistic to begin with, or did the macro environment, um, you know, really worsen? Um, well, it, it, it really worsened. I mean, I don't think that before you make the, while you're making an estimate, you don't go on the assumption that Fannie and Freddie are going to be taken over by the, the U.S. government. You don't go on the assumption that the fourth largest investment bank is going to go bankrupt. You don't go on the assumption that the largest insurance company in the world is going to be teetering on the brink. Uh, but all of those things have have happened in the past seven, eight, eight days. Um, that really does change the picture. All right. And, and then to kind of add insult to injury, in addition to the realignment on Wall Street and kind of the new world order there, uh, you've got hurricanes that are um, impacting or have the potential to negatively impact some of the insurers because of the money that they're going to be paying out in, in hurricane-related claims between now and the end of the year, too, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's sort of like you had two hurricanes hit simultaneously. One, on, one hit Houston, one hit Lower Manhattan. Um, of the two, the one that hit Lower Manhattan is probably more significant although I don't want to minimize the, the suffering of the, the people down in Galveston by any stretch of the imagination. Right. But, uh, so so I, I found out, and if, if there is one bright spot in the entire earnings scenario, it may come from big technology, from the technology sector. Analysts are looking for big technology companies to turn in some decent sales and decent profits, largely because of their overseas sales numbers. Now... You've got also a couple of possible canaries in the coal mine there with Dell uh, issuing a word that their PC business, you know, is going to soften, and Hewlett laying yeah. off some people there. Yeah, 24,000 is <laughs> more than just a, a few. Uh, so do you think the tech is going gonna, is gonna to help? I, I think they'll hold up better than the most areas, uh, but, you know, you've got worldwide economic slowdown. I mean, this is not confined to the U.S., um, and so how much overseas is going to help uh, is very much of a open question. Uh, right now, I, I think, you know, wh where you want to be is you, you sort of hunker down in companies that are not affected a, a great deal by economic growth and that have very strong balance sheets because it's going to be extraordinarily difficult for any company to borrow money to expand or, you know, inventory financing or, or any of that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, that leads you to places like the consumer staples, uh, like uh, electric utilities, which are often seen as bond substitutes. And, and bonds, particularly government bonds, have had the most incredible rally that I can remember. Uh, I mean, the the price of, I, I think I saw the, the 10 year is, is down well below 3.5%. Mm -hmm. You know, keep in mind that inflation, while well, it, it came in down a, a tick and, you know, you, you're still running over 5% a year. Uh, you know, so so for, for 10 years, well, the Fed is, is pouring liquidity into the system uh, with a fire hose. Uh, you know, is <laughs> it is pretty stunning. I mean, it's a, a total flight to quality that's going on. So how does what's happened here lately, this recent turn of events in this financial crisis, how does that alter your bottom line for third quarter? Oh, uh, as of last week, we were looking at it down 3%, and I previously had said, yeah, you know, no, it looks more like down 10% is more likely. Um, I'd say that probably, in reality, we're looking at something on the order of what we saw in the uh, the second quarter, which was down 20, 21 uh, percent. You know, and the the forecast for the fourth quarter, which are looking for a, a big rebound due to an easy uh, comparison of up like 41 percent. Those are totally non-operational. 
Um, they probably will have positive growth given the uh, uh, the very easy comparisons, but it it's not going to be anything close to uh, that big a, a, a bounce. Uh, and, and with falling oil prices yet, uh, does that mean that energy has had its day in the sun as far as earnings are concerned? Um, certainly, um, certainly short term. Well, there's still going to be the best uh, year over year earnings growth around, uh, but. You know, as of last week, we were talking about up almost 50 percent. Uh, that looks highly unlikely. Now, on the flip side, the falling oil prices will give a boost to you know things like you know airlines and you know some of the other companies, trucking companies, other uh, chemical feedstock companies, uh, which may take a little bit of that pressure off. But certainly, the uh, the energy companies will report. Good earnings, but nowhere near the eye-popping, spectacular uh, growth that was until very recently expected. So it goes with earnings trends and the latest assessment of same by our uh, research analyst, uh, our research director, I should say, Dirk Van Dyke. You know, earnings trends provides investors with an in-depth analysis of the markets along with the profit performance of S&P 500 companies. And each week, Dirk's report identifies which S&P 500 sectors are showing strength and which are showing weakness. In addition, the report highlights the most attractive sectors based on valuation and projected earnings growth. Dirk's entire most recent earnings commentary for the current week, including his median growth and revisions tables, may be linked to right off of our homepage at zax.com. All you have to do is scroll down the page till you get to Dirk's picture and headline. Click on it. It'll take you right to it. With Dirk Van Dyke, I'm Terry Ruffalo.